What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk about seven ways that you can lower your high blood pressure. Go ahead and smash the like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt. Leave me a comment guys, let me know if this is something that you deal with, if you have any additional tips to share, cause guys, honestly, there's probably hundreds of blood pressure tips, all right? Share them down below what has worked best for you. Remember guys, the description has my course if you're interested in overcoming anxiety and getting past symptoms like high blood pressure, fast heart rate, chest pain. I can go on and on and on. It takes a certain mindset to get past this. You have to stop feeling these symptoms with fear. You got to change your perspective. You have to be patient. You have to be consistent. You need tools. You need a strategy. I provide all of that in my course. So if you haven't gotten in there, please do it please do it. Link is down below in the description and in the first pinned comment. So guys, when it comes to high blood pressure, this was many of the anxiety symptoms that I had, but there were some other lifestyle choices that I was making that made my numbers even higher. Now, I was in my early 20s whenever I was dealing with this. So we're talking anywhere from 20 to 25 years old. Sitting down on the couch, my blood pressure could be anywhere from 130 to 150, you know, at rest over, you know, about 100. Whenever I would have panic attacks, we're talking about 160 to 180 over like 110 outrageous numbers. I had horrible white coat syndrome, so my vitals would always go up before even sitting down to get the cuff. So I became fearful of doctors noticing that I had high blood pressure, I had horrible health anxiety, so I thought my blood pressure was, you know, the result of a heart issue or something like that. Um, but it was anxiety. Anxiety was making my blood pressure high. But there are ways that you can lower this number, and I was able to do that. And a lot of the things I'm going to tell you, that it also works for heart rate. In fact, I have a whole separate video called 12 Ways to Actually Lower Your Heart Rate. If you want to check that out after this, I'll link it. Um, but I want to get right into this. The first one, this is the most obvious, guys. But some of you refuse to do it. Exercise. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Now, for the first two and a half years, like I've told you guys in my previous videos, I wasn't doing exercise to combat my anxiety. I was terrified to exercise because I didn't want my blood pressure to go up. I didn't want my heart rate to go up. Long term, though, exercise helps lower the heart rate and also lower blood pressure. So once I started doing daily exercise, the numbers started to go down automatically, even though I wasn't fully over my anxiety. Let's just be real. Exercise, especially things like cardio, HIIT workouts, circuits, they strengthen the heart. And whenever you strengthen the heart, it's more efficient. It's easier for the blood to be pumped throughout your body. Your vessels become stronger and your blood pressure goes down. Your heart doesn't have to work as hard to get that blood around to other parts of your body. So exercise, guys. My tip with that, if you're not exercising, you want to ease your way into it, try that out. Um, you know, start by walking, then let's move up to hiking or power walking. Now let's move up to slow jogging. Now let's do sprints. Now let's get into the weight room, whether it be with a membership or if you got some weights around the house, start doing some of that. Physical exercise is hands down the quickest way to lower your blood pressure. Uh, it's funny, it's quick, but it's also a long term thing. The next one, guys, is diet. Again, many of you refuse to change your diet. Primarily, we're talking about sodium here. Sodium makes your blood pressure higher. And in the beginning, guys, when I was not making any changes, most of my food had tons of sodium. And to add to the problem, the existing problem, I would just douse my food with extra table salt. So I'm putting all that extra salt on already sodium-packed foods. So we're talking about fried foods. Even with vegetables, guys, if you look at the, the canned vegetables, there's tons of sodium in that. All right? So lowering your sodium in your diet is one of the best ways. Also, guys, a lot of leafy greens like kale and spinach... It's higher in potassium, and potassium can help lower the sodium levels, which, you know, raise the blood pressure. So that's something. Also, dark chocolate has been proven to lower blood pressure, which is funny because dark chocolate uh, has been studied to help with anxiety in general, right? So it's funny. A symptom of anxiety, which is high blood pressure, it helps with as well. So uh, a little bit of dark chocolate at the end of the night. Don't go crazy. This doesn't give you permission to eat a whole Hershey bar or anything like that. But a few squares of it at night, try that out. Um, also, soy, hibiscus tea, uh, a couple other things that can help speed up that process. The next one, guys, is less alcohol. If you can do without completely, the better, okay? This was a huge problem for me. It made my problem much, much worse. So if you're like me, make these changes. I was drinking every single night, and we're talking about 10 to 15 units a night. This made my blood pressure extremely high. So whenever I combined exercise and I actually quit drinking for a long period of time to help me recover, which is required, you're not going to be able to work on yourself while being drunk every night. 
And I was doing this to combat my symptoms, but it just kicked me in the butt the next day and it was a vicious cycle all on its own. And I won't get all into that sad story of addiction and everything, but basically that happened. Whenever I kicked this out of my life, my blood pressure started to go down even faster. So it motivated me to continue to stay on that straight and narrow path. So less alcohol, guys. My advice to you, talk to your doctor if you're a heavy drinker like I was. Luckily, I just didn't have any crazy withdrawal symptoms or anything like that. I had a little bit of anxiety. But you want to be smart. You want to be safe. So talk to your doctor, guys, uh, to make sure that you do this the correct way. If you're, you're uh, even a moderate drinker, okay? It's always best to be safe so that can be smooth. The next one, guys, and I got my list over here, sorry. Uh, number four is less caffeine. Another one that many people struggle with. Luckily, I didn't struggle with kicking this out of my life too much. It, I was drinking some coffee, but I noticed that it triggered me just like that. Some of you are drinking energy drinks every single day, and you're wondering why your anxiety is high or that your heart rate's up and that your blood pressure is high. Get rid of pre-workouts, energy drinks, excessive amounts of coffee, soda. The sugar's not going to help either. That's going to raise your vitals up. Get rid of those things or at least start to reduce uh, the amounts that you're taking in. Luckily, with caffeine withdrawal, it's not really a dangerous thing, um, but you can have some sleeping issues and some headaches. I dealt, dealt with some sleeping issues whenever I first quit caffeine. Um, but guys, less of that if you are dealing with high blood pressure. Number five, guys, no tobacco. I'm not even going to say manage tobacco. Immediately after you smoke a cigarette or you get a dip, or whatever you're doing, vaping, pouches, whatever it is, even gum, your blood pressure is going to spike. It's not necessarily a long-term thing. At least I don't believe there's a ton of evidence from what I've seen that it affects it long-term. But you're constantly spiking it. You're constantly spiking it up. So tobacco triggered me, and it definitely raises your heart rate easily. The next one, guys, is weight loss. Excuse me, weight loss. This is another one. But if you're doing the diet that I talked about, eating a lot more green vegetables, um, eating the things that help reduce anxiety, and you're combining that with exercise, the weight loss will come, okay? But obviously, when you have a lot more weight, guess what? Your heart has to work harder to get more blood to all those extra areas. So it just makes sense to lose weight. Now, with weight loss, the quickest way, in my opinion, is intermittent fasting. Now, do your own research. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes talking about it. Um, obviously, exercising and dieting uh, or having a good diet, right? Not necessarily crash diets. I don't really believe in those. Those things will help you lose weight over time. But intermittent fasting can actually speed that process, process up. Uh, basically, you're fasting for at least 12 hours, and you can fast all the way up to 20 hours, which means you're not taking in any calories. You're staying hydrated. You're drinking water. And then you're having your meal within a certain amount of time. I do OMAD most of the time. One meal a day, I eat everything that I need for that day at once. This can help you from overeating. That way you're not taking in as many calories. It makes weight loss a lot easier. So that's about as much information I'm going to give. It's amazing. The fastest way to lose weight, hands down. And number seven, I love this one as well. If you want immediate relief from a fast heart rate and a high blood pressure, breathing techniques. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes talking to you about each of these breathing techniques. Look it up on Google. There's tons of them. My favorite, go look up the 478 technique. It can actually help you lower your heart rate and your blood pressure within seconds. Okay, so try that one out. There's tons of others. There's tons of breathing techniques. If you can do these breathing techniques three times a day for about three to five minutes, that's going to help you as well. And obviously, guys, there's more tips in this. Obviously, lowering your stress and anxiety levels, but I wasn't going to talk about this one on this video because that's what I do on this channel is help you with anxiety. So obviously, lowering anxiety is going to make your blood pressure go down. So make sure that you're taking all the advice and all my other videos. I hope you got value. If you are new here, please, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get updated when I put these videos out. Please like this video if you got value, please. And again, leave me a comment down below. If you made it this far, I want you in all caps to put DEDICATED dedicated all right also remember guys the description has all of my info additional tips on anxiety which will help you lower your blood pressure if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one, and again my course please grab that if you deal with anxiety and if this is one of the symptoms that you're dealing with that was my bread and butter so please check that out but guys i love you all and until next time keep fighting